Hey, it is Tuesday, and we are here with our Tuesday devotion, Pastor Scott here. We're going to talk to you a little bit about restricted access. Yep, restricted access. What does that mean? Well, we know what it means when you're going around in certain areas or maybe a <clears throat> place that you're not allowed to be at at work or uh, at the airport, for example. There's restricted access all over the place for only certain people, and Honestly, I think a lot of times we live life with restricted access ideas to God. It's like, God, you can reign over my relationships, but only to the extent that I, I, I need to let you do that sometimes. Uh, God, you can, you can move in my life in Bible study and, and things like that, but you know this part of work I need to keep secret. Uh, separate. I need to keep separate from you, or you can't. You can't really do anything with that God. So I'm not going to really give that over to you. Uh, I'm in charge of that, uh, and that's restricted access. And and honestly, we may not actually think like that, but we may actually operate like that without really knowing it. And Paul, in the book of Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, to be exact. Uh, talks about the nature of faith, and he spent time with the believers there in uh, Thessalonica, and he instructed them a lot about God and life, and he sends this word to encourage them to move along in their faith. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 says this, We ask you and appeal to you in the Lord Jesus that just as you receive from us how it is necessary for you to live and to please God, just as indeed you are living, that you progress even more. So he's continuing to instruct them really in sanctification, the work of becoming holy by serving God, loving God, uh, loving others in the way that God wants us to love. And even though he's incredibly grateful for the faith of the believers there, Paul doesn't want them to remain in a standstill. He doesn't want them uh, to just uh, sit there and go, okay, I've given God this part. He wants them to turn their complete lives over to Christ, to pursue him. Uh, God doesn't expect us to meet a faith quota. He uh, there is no faith quota. It's it's all. It's everything. He wants everything in our life. He wants to claim all areas of our our lives fully for himself. That's that's what we're called to live like in the Bible. It's not an option, as it says there in First Thessalonians four again. It's necessary for you to live and to please God. Uh, nothing ex escapes God's notice. Uh, nothing escapes God's attention. But the beauty of all of this is he doesn't expect us to go about all of this work of giving things over to him on our own because, honestly, that would be disaster. And I think that's why a lot of times we don't give things over to God is we feel like, um, I'm going to give it over to him, but what's going to happen? Well, we have to remember that God has given us his Holy Spirit uh, that continues to form and to shape us in our relationships, in our work life, in our time spent studying and understanding God's Word, uh, God gives us the Holy Spirit to guide and direct us in every part of our lives. We need to give everything over to Him. God expects our total allegiance, and God gives us what is necessary through His Spirit, the, the tools and the amazing grace found only in him to accomplish that through him. And so just some thoughts for this week. Do you have some restricted access areas to your life that you really have not given over to God? And my encouragement is to give it over to him now and, and pray about that and, and study about that and learn through the Holy Spirit and through God's Word how to give that area of your life over to Him. And let it be transformed. Let it be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of letting God rule every area of your life. Okay? So that's my encouragement for this week. Hope you have a blessed week, and we will see you on Thursday night and Sunday morning. God bless.